In the last video, we talked a bit about the action potential and that there's a bit more to action potential than just purely what, what I showed in the last video. I said that there's also the sodium potassium pumps, these um, calcium, not the calcium, but the potassium and the sodium channels. So what we're going to do in this video is cover those in a bit more detail and also show you a graphical representation of how the actual action potential looks like. And this is the graph I'm using, and that, I got that graph from this book, the Heinemann Biology book. So I'm just um, telling you where I got the, for copyright issues to make sure I've given my source. Right, so in terms of the actual um, steps, if you haven't watched the last videos, it'd probably be good to watch them because otherwise this might be a bit foreign. But what I've just shown here is just one part of the myelin sheet. This would be, sorry, one part of the axon. This would be the myelin, one myelin sheet. And this would be the axon itself. So inside the axon, this would be the intracellular. Right? Intracellular means inside the cell. And what's surrounding it would be the extracellular. That would be the outside of the cell. Now you can imagine there'd be another pump here. So there'd be, sorry, this is not a pump, it's a channel. There'd be a sodium and a potassium channel on both sides of the actual sheet. And this is actually what the node of Ravier is. So the node of Ravier is where you can find the actual channels, node of Ravier. This is the gap in between the actual sheets. Um, but what we want to talk about is this graph and what this graph actually means, because you need to be able to stop when it says you need to gather, present information from secondary sources to graphically represent a type of action potential. So this is how most typical um, action potentials look like. You've got it being resting, then there's a jump, then there's a bigger jump, a bigger drop, and then it's back to normal. So basically these five steps or more or less five steps. That's what we want to talk about in this video. And we, uh, hopefully I can also then maybe talk a bit about the sodium potassium pump and how everything gets back to normal as well. Make it a bit less confusing and a bit less over the place. Um, right, so first what we have, so the first part, the first um, one here is at minus 70 millivolts. And remember, this would be the resting membrane potential. And remember the reason why it was minus 70 is because I haven't drawn all of the chlorine and the protein and the phosphates, but you can imagine there'll be some minus negative charged things outside, and there will be some negatively charged things inside, the proteins and the phosphates inside, and the chlorine outside. But basically, the main idea is there's a bit more negative charge inside than there is outside, which is why the intracellular, so the membrane from the inside, is a bit of a negative charge compared to the outside. So overall, the difference between inside and outside is minus 70 millivolts. That's what that means. But that's the resting potential. That means nothing happens. Remember, remember the reason why nothing happens is because the actual sodium pump is going to be closed at minus 70. It will only open at about minus 55 uh, millivolts. So it has to have about minus 55 millivolts for this to be open. So at the moment, this is meant to represent a close. So you can see it won't um, won't be open. Whereas the actual potassium pump, which is here, it can actually, it's, it's, it's a bit open. Things can go in and out to a degree, right? So sometimes you might have a chlorine escaping and just leaving. Um, but most of the time, the actual, there's active transport to pump potassium back in, right? So most of the potassium will be going into the cell and it's trying to keep a steady, a, a consistent level of potassium inside than outside. And the main idea is that there's more potassium inside the cell and outside the cell, whereas with sodium, there's more outside the cell than inside the cell. But there's still going to be a bit of sodium inside the cell and a bit of potassium outside the cell. But overall, there's just a difference in how much of it is inside and outside. Right? But that's the actual resting potential. So here we have it, everything is okay, nothing, there's no action potential yet. But what happens then is remember we have that stimulus coming down from the dendrites, the neurotransmitters activated the dendrites. They made a rush of positively charged particles come down towards the axon. And these green particles are that that um, dendrite, the actual positive charge that was sent from the dendrites. Now what that happened, what that does is, remember this value here was an actual representation of the difference between the, the inside and outside. But now because we have a bit more inside than we had beforehand, right? we have this extra charge. What that means is this minus 55, this minus 70 volts will change, it'll become a bit less negative because there's a bit more positive charge inside, right? So that's why it's gone from minus 70 to minus 55. Now this minus 55, that's important because that's when the actual action potential starts. So on the graph here, the first number one would have been this part here, 
I should not be using yellow because you can't see that. Number one would be here, it's at minus 70, nothing has happened. All of a sudden there's a bit of a jump, that's the second part, that's when we actually have our dendrites sending down, sending down their nerve impulse towards the axon. And you can see this is the threshold, so the threshold potential, this in this case would be about minus 55 millivolts. So remember if it's a minus 60 volts, if the whole inside is minus 60 volts, nothing happens. It has to reach that threshold for the, or the gates to open. But that's what's going to be happening here. So once it reaches minus 55 volts, What's going to be happening is these gates have opened, right? So you can see the potassium, sorry, the, the, the sodium gates open up. And what does it mean in terms of sodium gates opening up? Well, that means that those sodium particles will be, will be rushing inside. Right? So they will be rushing inside. And that's going to be our next step, right? So our third point is after these sodium particles have rushed in, you can see that these are now inside. You've got both your potassium and your sodium, quite a few of them, the vast majority of them inside, which means beforehand um, we had it being quite negatively charged. So in the first example, minus, minus 70, but now it's going to jump up to plus something, right? Because now there's more inside, more positive charge inside than outside. So now it's going to be positively charged. And that's what you can see on the graph. So you can see this is as sodium enters the cell, there's going to be a huge increase in the positive charge of the membrane. And that means now it can go all the way up to about plus 15 millivolts. And that's when the next part triggers because the potassium is also um, is also activated by, but this not by negative charges, but positive charges. So if there's about a, a potential, a membrane potential of about plus 50 millivolts, that's when the actual potassium gates open. Obviously, one thing that I haven't shown here, but that will happen once we have all these charges in there. Remember what I talked about last time? If you have all these positive charges in there, what's going to happen is it's going to be sending these over, right? Because some of the some of these particles want to be moving. They want to move away from all this condensed, positively charged area. So what that's going to mean, it's going to mean that some of them will move over. And by doing so, these next, these next channels will also happen, open, right? Because before then, those channels would have had that minus 70 millivolts when everything was resting. But as these positive charges come over, that will bring it down to minus 55, roughly. And once that happens, again, the actual sodium one will open, and that means there's going to be more of a flood in from the outside, and that means that the same thing will open, happen again, right? So that's a chain reaction. Um, but I won't be focusing on chain reaction in this video, I covered in the last video. This is more just ha what happens in terms of these channels at different voltages. Right, so in terms of so the third graph, I just tried to show on the third point here. I tried to show what happens when the actual, all of them have come in. That means we've got a really high level, right? We've got a really high level because now it's, the inside is going to be much more positively charged. But then as soon as the it reaches about plus 50 millivolts, what's going to happen is these potassium gates are going to be opening. So I've already started showing that they open here, right? So because now it's plus 50 millivolts, you can imagine some of these potassium particles are going to be pushed out, right? They're going to be pushed out. And number four, that's when all of them have been pushed out already. Right? So the fourth, that's at about minus 80 millivolts, because what's going to happen now is we've actually pushed out all of these positive particles. So you can imagine we had initially we had um, four inside and four outside, right? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four positive inside and outside. But now we have one, two, three, four, five, five outside, one, two, three, three inside, which means now is a slightly different um, potential than it was originally. Originally we had minus 70 millivolts. But now we actually have minus 80 millivolts because now it's even more negative than it was to begin with, right? And this is what causes this bit of a, a dip. So you can see here this dip here. This is, um, it goes below the resting potential. It's actually dropped down below the resting potential. Just because we've pushed out more of the potassium than we had to. And that's caused it to dip down a bit further. But once it does dip down a bit further, that's when your sodium potassium pumps are activated. And these sodium potassium pumps will bring everything back to normal, right? So these sodium potassium pumps will bring everything back to normal because they get activated. And what these sodium potassium pumps do, 
is for every two for every two F sorry for every three potassium that are put back into the membrane, two sodiums leave, right? So so two sodiums will go this way, two, and three potassiums will go back in. And all that basically makes sure that it goes back to 70 millivolts. So what happens is you can imagine we've got two of these going to the pump, they'll, they'll be pumped out, and then three potassiums are going to be pumped back in. And if you look at now, we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's exactly what we had to begin with. So we're back to normal. So we're back to what we were beforehand. And now it's ready again. So next impulse, it can be sent again. That's how it recycles. That's how it makes sure it can keep keep going. Um, so I'll quickly go over again. This is just what happens in terms of depolarization and repolarization. So at the beginning, we had the whole resting potential being about 70 millivolts. This was polarized. Polarized it was means that it's a charge. Then at some stage, we had the nerve impulse from the other neuron coming. It, it was the neurotransmitters activated dendrites. They sent down a positive charge, which means there was a slight change in the negative charge from the uh, in the inside. It got down to about minus 55 volts because it's a bit more positive in the inside now. That caused the sodium channels to open. And once the sodium channels opened, so here this is resting, then you had a bit of a, a jump. That's when the charge came from, from dendrites. And all of a sudden you had a huge jump. That's when the sodium gates opened, right? The sodium gates opened, you had that huge jump up. But now we have a we had at some stage when, when it was here, so when it was at zero, that's what we call depolarized because now it was neutral at some a small second was a millisecond was neutral. That's what we call depolarized. It's got, it's, and then it, it became repolarized. It was again there was a polar. It was actually not more positive than it was beforehand. But when it's really positive, what that does is it opens these potassium gates, right? So these potassium gates open, and that starts pumping out potassium back out. And the potassium being pumped out means in the fourth step, that means that we've now actually gone too far below. Remember, potassium is usually inside the cell and sodium is usually outside the cell. But in this case, we've, we have the other way around. That's just the way it works. But the, the point being is we've pumped out too much potassium, which means now we've got a minus 80 millivolts. We have it even more negative inside than outside. But that's okay because once it gets about, gets about to minus 80 millivolts, so between here and there, it gets back to resting potential. And the way it does that is because it activates these sodium potassium pumps, which will make sure that the sodium uh, is pumped back out again and the potassium is back, pumped back in again. And does so for every two potassium, uh, for every two sodium that will go out, three potassium come in, and all that makes sure that the fault returns to normal. And once it does, it can start going again. Right? But the whole idea of this resting potential was obviously to make sure that a signal can be moved on to the next, and it happens again at the next, and it happens again at the next, so it's like a chain reaction. So once this is uh, happens once, it has activated the actual sodium and potassium channels at the next node, and then they will activate the next one, and they will activate the next one, and they will activate the next one, and eventually they activate the calcium channels, which will then trigger the next neurotransmitter release, and they will activate the next neuron. Right? But for this stop point, you should need to be able to kind of know what these different things on that graph are. So hopefully you have a fair idea of what this minus 70 means, what the bump is, what the high part is, what the low part is, and how it gets back to resting potential. I hope that's useful.